Hello, Beth. <laughs> Hello, Lou, Catherine, Kathleen, Laurie, Karen. So many people. Hi, Nina. Who are some of the people you recognize, Gail? Are there any regulars from your meetups? Well, you know what? I've got this weird thing in the corner asking me if I want to leave the meeting and I'm afraid to click on it. And I can't. <laughs> And it's covering my, my, um, my, uh, I can't, I can't click. On, I'm afraid to click on it. No, don't do that. I, because I'm, I'm afraid it's going to kick me out, but it means that oh. I can't see my, um, click on my gallery or my view. This is so, oh, so strange. Uh, can you change it if you minimize or, uh, you know, change the window size? I can't, it's all underneath this little sign, this little thing that says leave meeting. Okay. Like I've never had this happen before, honestly, like we're having all kinds of fun. Okay. Things. So while well, people in the chat are saying that it is okay to click on it and someone just did. Okay. I just, cl I just clicked on it. Yes. I'm good. Oh, there okay. you are. <laughs> now I can see everybody. Hello. Hi, Liz. I see Hi. people that I know. Uh, let's see. Hi everybody. We love to know where you're where you're from. If you put it in the chat, that's great. Um, so nice to see you all. Thank you for coming on a Sunday. I know. I'm really blown away by everybody who is willing to take time out to watch someone else talk about their life. <laughs> it's <laughs> just it's so generous. <laughs> So we have people from SF, from Florida, Arizona, Texas, West Central Illinois. West Central Illinois. Is that Springfield? <laughs> That's Central Illinois. Oh, what's what's West Central Illinois? I'm curious. <clears throat> well, most some people have heard of Peoria. Oh, I've I've heard of Peoria. They have a huge I don't live there, but I live That's They the have a factory of some kind. Caterpillar. Caterpillar is there. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> Somebody's from Colombia, things. Argentina. Yeah, and, wow. Yeah. And I used to go yeah. with the Urban Sketchers in Chicago. By the uh -huh. I had a feeling I'm going to sign up for these things, and then they got all this crap that they do before they. Uh -oh. That's that's so true. Uh -oh. This is one of those moments. This is exactly it. Just fill up. You better mute yourself if you're going to say bad stuff about us. Faking enthusiasm, <laughs> just pretending to care where people are from. Someone's from Calgary, but originally in <laughs> Vancouver. That's a very bold move to go towards we're snow. Not, is we're really, not pretending. Really we actually enough. care. <laughs> Ontario, LA, Edinburgh, yeah. and Manchester, UK. So there are a lot of time zones, which is really great because this is later in the afternoon for a lot of people, even early Sorry. evening for a lot of people. And that is so really warm. great because yeah. people have families and having become a parent kind of sort of recently i feel like it is well, so amazing when people are willing to yeah, nishan hang on a second can you mute everyone i'm thinking about that yes yes i can so i i think you're muted too gail i don't i didn't mean to do that so you'll have to unmute yourself there we go <laughs> so yeah okay. so just some housekeeping uh 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 uh, well, well, first of all, welcome, everybody. I'm Gail Kabaker, and... Hello, everyone. I'm Nishan. <laughs> you might know me as the sneaky artist. And Gail and I are super excited to share something that is very close to us, that is very uh, dear to how we practice our art with you today. Not and it's really. So great to have all of you. wearing completely American clothing. It's completely this patti. Uh-oh. Okay, once more, once more. I guess as go. people are coming in, they're not muted. Yeah, that's true. Why don't we why don't we just ask people when you come in, if you could please keep yourself on mute, that would be awesome. And if mm -hmm. you have a question, you can type it in the chat or at the end, we'll open it up for questions. Continue, Nishan. <laughs> <laughs> so um let me see if I can if I can do something about this. Can people be muted on entry? I don't see that option here, but they can unmute themselves. And let me take that away just for a little while, and then we can enable it back on. So because I'd love to hear from people as well. 
yeah. so uh, Gail and I are very excited to share some very beautiful pages with you, pages that are very dear to us and moments that have been recorded in these sketchbooks that we have. Um, I recently became a father and uh, it's just about 11 weeks. Tomorrow it's going to be 11 weeks. And since day one, I've been, since day minus one, I've been very uh, interested in recording every moment of uh, Rohan's life and pre-life, just as he was emerging from the womb. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to share our sketching materials. We're going to share um, the sketchbook pages themselves. And we're going to talk about how this practice has uh, helped us, affected us. And maybe we can also talk about what it what what it takes to do this kind of thing because I feel like drawing is something that everyone can do whether you draw well or you don't draw so well is a matter for an like it's a different kind of consideration that a lot of people really shouldn't think about it's a beautiful way to spend time and it's a great way to pay attention to the people in front of us and that's part of what we want to share today Gail um yeah so uh Everything that Nishant just said, I said the same. And uh, I started drawing my granddaughter um, when she was born and she was uh, born at the end of November, uh, three years ago. Um, so um, I'll talk about that process when I'm showing. I think we wanted to just do a quick intro from each of us because a lot of uh, Nishant's people won't know anything about me and my people won't know anything about Nishant. So I'm gonna pretend like you guys don't know anything about me <laughs> and I'll just give you a quick, like, this is who I am. Um, so I've been an artist, illustrator, writer, um, since I graduated from art school, um, almost uh, a long time ago. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I graduated from art school um, as a fashion illustrator, and I did that freelance for a while, and then I moved to the boonies of Western Massachusetts following my husband from San Francisco, and that's when I branched out into general illustration. So over the course of my career, I've worked in, I've done editorial and advertising and all different kinds of um, um of work and uh but i've what i thought i would show you um and you can spotlight my page Nishan. yeah uh let me as soon as i'm able to find it okay so i'll just keep <laughs> talking till you can find it um okay. because what i was going to show you is um uh, just a few things that like I'm most proud of in my career, which is my New Yorker covers. So, ooh, that's not going to work. I'm going to take them out of the, oh, I was so organized. I have these all packed up for taking on a um, retreat. And now that's going to be, oh, maybe it's not too shiny. Oh, uh, I love it. So I'm just going to very quickly show you these New Yorker covers. This was my first one uh, almost 13 years ago. Um, and it was celebrating gay marriage. You know what? I'm not gonna take them out because it's gonna take too long, but that's gonna look terrible. Oh, okay. Um, hey, Nishant, why don't you spotlight me again um, on my face? Sure. Um... So I'll just, I'll just see if I can hold them up because it's gonna take too long to take them out. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's see how bad this looks. Oh, that's not so bad. So yeah. this was my second one. And uh, there was four years in between my first and second one in which I probably submitted hundreds of ideas. And this was my third one, which was very exciting because it was a fashion cover. And this is my fourth one. And that's my dog, Charlie. <laughs> and then this was my fifth one. And then they started becoming very much more painterly. And actually these are paintings from my actual sketchbooks. Um, so, and this is uh, from my, from my uh, backyard. And this is from the road down my, leading up to our house. 
And then this is last summer's uh, cover, which is uh, painted from a selfie of myself. Um, so the New Yorker covers have been pretty much the one of the most, the coolest things that I've done in my career, but I've also, um, I do a lot of uh, portraits, mostly of women, and um, I do a lot of commissions, and I teach a ton with my co-teaching partner, Jennifer Orkin Lewis. Some of you know her as August Wren, and we teach all over the world, and um, we have a workshop coming up that we'll put the link in the chat uh, on May 11th on zoom and uh, I love teaching like teaching in the last three years has become like a whole new thing for me so that's me in a nutshell um Nishant why don't you just say a, a, a little bit about you and then sure maybe we'll come back to me and I'll do my sketchbook that's then... a good idea okay all great. right hello hi everyone so uh, a lot of you know me and for everybody else uh, my name is Nishant. Uh, I go by Sneaky Artist. <laughs> this is because I am a self-taught artist. Whatever self-taught means, I don't think it's a very accurate term anymore. We all learn from everything around us and from infinite YouTube tutorials. But I, I studied to be an engineer like a lot of people from India of my generation. And I went too far with it. But I was halfway through a PhD program when I realized that my dream in life was to be a writer. And I quit my PhD program in order to start writing the greatest novel of all time. Um, writing is very hard, so that didn't go as planned. And I didn't quite finish. And I reached this point where I was really looking to run away from my desk. So I picked up a sketchbook and I ran out the door with a fountain pen. I had always wanted to learn to draw, but it was not something I was good at. And I'd reached a point with my perfectionism where I realized that I need to stop erasing my lines if I'm ever going to finish a drawing and if I'm ever going to move forward. So I picked up a fountain pen. I went to a Starbucks cafe nearby. I was in Chicago at that time. And I just started drawing what was in front of me. And this became very addictive. I started to take something from this experience that I had never gotten from hours and hours of practice of different kinds. I called myself a sneaky artist because I was kind of ashamed of what I was doing. This whole business of being a grown adult, trying to learn to draw was so strange uh, that I wanted to draw very quickly from a corner seat in a cafe and get out of there before anybody could see me. Anybody could come up to me and ask what this, what business I have doing this silly thing. So I thought of it as sneaky art, as me getting away with something. Tara asks if I have my first drawing. I do, but it's not within arm's reach at the moment. I wish I could share it. I'm going to share it sometime soon on my Substack because this is a journey that I've started to talk about again. But uh, so that's what sneaky art was, me getting away with a drawing in a public space and uh, somehow hoping to learn to draw. It turns out you can learn to draw this way. So I would walk around Chicago just looking for interesting things that would spark my curiosity and give myself this permission that I'm allowed to make a quick drawing if I can quote unquote get away with it. And this led me to walk more, it led me to explore more, and it led me to find new ways to get away with it. So draw quickly, leave it quote unquote incomplete, draw what you like, don't draw everything else, and draw with the fewest lines possible. All of this became my style, all of this became the stuff that would become my distinctive approach, my way of seeing things and my way of representing it. So what's happened recently is that I'm a sneaky artist around my son, who is now 11 weeks old, who will be 11 weeks tomorrow. Um, I love to draw him. I find drawing is a way to pay very close attention to our world. As a sneaky artist in the various places I have lived since Chicago, I have used drawing as a way, as an immigrant, to become comfortable in my foreign environment, to allow myself to spend time in a cafe where I don't know anybody, where nobody knows me, where I stick out like a, uh, like a, like a, you know, just a different person. And I, the sketchbook has sort of given me the space and the permission to spend time to think about how these things that are so different from my world are still somehow similar to find similarities and resonances and to find beauty 
even in ordinary places on ordinary days around ordinary people, how to find something beautiful because now it is a drawing. I'm not sure which is which. Does the beauty come before the drawing or does the act of drawing make something beautiful, something that was ordinary, something we just look past in our busy days? But I have come to this space where they're both sort of the same and they're both talking to each other. There's a lot of hidden beauty in our world and a sketchbook can sometimes be the way we access it. And I've made it my business to do that. So what I do now is I'm a full-time artist. I'm also trying to write, but that's not going so well. So now I kind of write about what I draw and what I see and how I feel about this business of observing urban life, this business of observing cities and how people live together in cities. As an immigrant, I'm naturally interested in how we live together, even surrounded by strangers, even surrounded by people who are totally different from us, whom we don't know, whom we don't even really want to know. But uh, we, in this model of a city, we function together and we live together. And my being in this cafe allows this cafe to run, as does their being in this cafe allow this cafe to exist for me. The fact that there are strangers on the train together is the reason why trains run, not just for me. So drawing them is a way to appreciate that, appreciate how we coexist, how we live together and how together we run a city. That's what my art is about. That's what I talk about on my Substack newsletter. That's what I am trying to now write a book about to share my art and my way of approaching it and my way of seeing the world through a sketchbook. That's sort of what Gail and I are going to talk about because we, uh, I have recently started this and Gail has been doing this for a while that she's been looking at her granddaughter through a sketchbook, trying to understand the curves of someone's face, the way light falls on them with the colors that we have in our hands. There's a bit of translation, there's a bit of interpretation, but it's a different way of seeing what we see and maybe a different way of depicting and maybe that makes us better at seeing. And if we are better at seeing, I think it makes us more conscientious and more attentive, which is what I, in this short time, have been taking from this experience. I want to switch back to Gail now because I really want to hear how it started for her and the excitement with which she began and the excitement that sustains this practice after so many months and a few years have passed. So let's go back to you, Gail. Should I switch to the overhead so that you can show your yeah. sketches? overhead all right wow it's great to hear your story it's it's always so interesting to me how different everybody's stories are um okay so when mona was born uh three a little over three years ago i went down my i live in massachusetts my daughter is in um, um new york oh by the way Nishant, can you mm -hmm. keep track of the time? Just, I'll do that. Just give me, um, like, maybe at 15 minutes, give me a warning. Sure thing. Okay, awesome. Um, so um, so I went down uh, when she was about, a, a, I don't know, a week or nine days old. I gave them some time to, you know, acclimate. And then I went down. And, um, you know, it was a very quiet, insular, it was December, it was cold, it was the height of COVID, you know, it was intense. And um, when we're just hanging out, th this is actually one of the very first drawings that I did. And I basically, you know, just like drew what I was seeing. These aren't from photos. These are me sitting there drawing, you know, just while we're hanging out. And, um, I kind of continued that. Um, this is all from that first visit. And, um, you know, as you can see, we're walking with masks on. And, um, and I just did very simple line drawings. I had no plan, no nothing, you know, just continuing. I, I've had a sketchbook practice for years. So, um, and then I took it, and then I took it into my regular sketchbook, um, which looks like, uh, I'll show you, like, you know, like, like, like I'll do a painting of, um, oh, wait a minute, let me get it a little bit higher here. Um, sorry, hang on a second. 
so you can see the whole thing. There we go. So a lot of times I will um, just, um, yeah, I do whatever in my sketchbooks. I mean, I just kind of paint whatever, whatever I want. And I started um, my first paintings that I did of Mona were in the sketchbook. And I started this um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I was just kind of playing and having fun. And they were just like little observations. And I was using different media. I see our mutual friend, uh, Samantha Dion Baker is here and uh -huh. uh, actually introduced me to Nishant. And I had, I met Sam like right at the beginning of the pandemic and I was very inspired by her Draw Your Day uh, sketchbooks. So I was kind of trying to, I was being influenced by that, you know, when I was doing these. And I was trying all different kinds of media and I really didn't know what I was doing. I was just, I was just playing and having fun. And Again, we I, have a couple of relevant questions. Yeah. Uh, some people want to know what are the materials you're using yeah. and maybe you could also tell us about uh, the choice of sketchbook. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the sketchbook that I use is a Strathmore mixed media, soft cover, and it holds paint really, really well. And um, I paint with acrylic gouache and I draw first, I draw it out first with a watercolor pencil and that just absorbs in. Uh -huh. So, so this book, book I started with the intention of keeping it only Mona, like a dedicated sketchbook uh -huh. to one thing, which I had never done in my life ever. And I realized as I, started these paintings that in order because i'm terrible like i'll start like a 30-day project and after four days i'm like out of there like <laughs> i just i'm not good with consistent themes right i realized that in order to keep myself happy and engaged i had to have kind of a no rules rules thing and mm -hmm. it was like there's no rules but I had two rules actually one is it didn't matter if it looked like her and I had to be having fun so no page could feel like oh I have to I have to finish this right or, you know like and here this is a really good example of when I was very influenced by Sam's um sketchbooks because you know, I'm playing with my writing and, and, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, trying to think of how I'm designing it. Um, this kind of, and then I kind of started making it a, my own a bit more. And I was just like, there were no rules, you know, I was just doing whatever I wanted and, and trying different things and, and playing and, you know, is it, I just, is it difficult to give yourself this space to play? Like, you know, a lot of people, even when they're not, when they're not very uh, used to a sketchbook habit, they find it like they find this requirement almost to live up to how a sketchbook should look. Is it even, is it still hard for you, you know, with so much art experience? Is it difficult to kind of just do what you feel like? Uh, no, it's actually essential because... Mm -hmm. Even when I have when I have illustration assignments that have deadlines or whatever, I will oftentimes start my day with a sketchbook page to play because mm -hmm. it loosens me up. It's like only for me and it's just fun. Um, so I I I don't have a hard I, I've I mean, honest to God, it's been it's been over three years. Okay. And I am blown away that I, I mean I've definitely slowed down a little bit because I'm I'm really really busy with assignments <laughs> so but I, but I had assignment work this whole time you know so it's not like I had months where I had no work I had work the whole time it's just that I made this a, a priority right and what started to happen is I started filling my pages more and they started um, I still incorporated a little writing. I love that some of it 
it's like we can tell like okay mona's getting two teeth i was usually dating them so this is Ju week of the visit of june 18th so that's mm -hmm. the week so june 18th you know she, we we can look back and be like oh she was six months old and she was getting teeth so it's fun to um um this was like we we do a lot of FaceTime, you know, they live four hours away. So um, so this is so this is I'm just going to keep flipping through this first. Please. Sketch. Yes. Um, and and one of the things that I really push myself in the sketchbook is I draw really weird perspectives, which honestly, in assignment work, I would avoid like the plague. Like, right. This is really hard. Right. But because <laughs> Because I don't care, because I'm only doing it for myself, it doesn't matter that my leg looks like it's coming out of her ear. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no rules. It doesn't matter. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll take it into like more of a fantasy thing or I love to work on these when I'm talking on the phone. Um, and um, that's an interesting way to sort of fit it into your day uh, what, yeah. uh there's, there's a question about how much time you roughly put into one page how, how does that work for you it really depends i mean never more than an hour they're all mm -hmm. very fast um but a lot of times like if i'm if i'm on a zoom call or i'm on the phone and i just want to like listen to who i'm talking to and space out and paint a pattern you know i'll do that you know like painting a pattern is is kind of not mindless but just kind of really relaxing right i have started I'm, I'm realizing as i'm showing you guys i'm starting to let go of, of more writing but i'm also just like oh my goodness i just have so much fun with the patterns yeah and and, and i have and i'm really don't have a, a, a theme i don't have a plan like oh now i'm going to do like this is a spread and now I'm, you know, I, there's no rules. Like I just do. And sometimes if I start, and these are all from photos. So, you know, I take my own photos of, of her and, um, or my daughter sends me photos. And so that's sketchbook number one. And sketchbook number two started September 18th. So she was almost a year. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I just kind of kept up the same theme, only I think what happened is they started getting a little bigger. Like I started, and I, I really do love finding things where, um, you know, I've got really weird angles. She uh -huh. loves my dog, Charlie, so much. So I, I started to try to put um, Charlie into more um, paintings um but you know this is like her first birthday and um you know none of these actually look like her i think that's a really <laughs> important important thing to to and this doesn't look like my daughter you know what i mean right but it doesn't matter it totally doesn't matter because that's the kind of stuff that will really get me hung up and it will stop being fun right um so, I mean, that looks a little bit like me, <laughs> but um, that looks nothing like her, you know, so that kind of stuff just doesn't matter. And if I don't finish a page, it happens once in a while. I just, I won't finish it. Um, you know, I usually draw in much smaller sketchbooks, but looking at these pages, I really feel like I need to get a bigger one now. Well, the thing about the bigger sketchbook, and I'll show you guys after I show you this, the... Mm -hmm. um, all these uh, I'll show you a smaller one that I have um a, a bigger sketchbook can tend to feel precious mm -hmm. which I really try to let go of you know um so that's why it's okay if like one page only has a little bit on it and it, it's I, I'm really trying to not worry like like you know each page doesn't have to be a masterpiece it's like it's just about having fun and um you know for first scooter ride march 25th you know like and i actually i love to play photo shoot with her uh -huh. so well you know like if i'm if i'm watching her sometimes i'll be like oh let's play photo shoot and she just poses for me 
And, um, um, you know, this is also a place where I explore with color because I tend to paint with pretty subdued colors and, and very few colors. Um, so I try to just let myself not have a lot of rules about that. Right. I also, I also take pictures of them. And luckily my daughter, I hope she's going to be here. I don't know if she's here. She was hoping to pop in. Um, Sonia, if you're here, just be sure and write in the chat. So my daughter is awesome about letting me take pictures of her. I mean, they're naked in the shower, right? I, <laughs> this is an after shower. And I'm like, hello, let, I'm just taking a few pictures. And, and you know, she she's also a photographer. She's a musician, but she's mm -hmm. also an amazing photographer. So she has a real appreciation for photography and photos and sends me amazing photos. But not everyone would be comfortable with this. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I mean, this is one of my favorites. I love this. Um, and like I said, I've started trying to incorporate Charlie more because what I realized what was starting to happen, I think right around this one, this is book three. Um, what I I real and, and so the other thing is is like like you know, she looks like a middle-aged woman here. Like <laughs> I love this painting, but it doesn't look like her, but it mm -hmm. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I caught the energy. I'm having fun. Mm -hmm. and I really would love to do more like this where I'm combining more things. And, right. you know, what might have happened over here is I might have actually painted something and then not liked it and then painted over it. And I and I do that a lot sometimes, too, because I, I actually don't like to have sketchbook pages that I hate. So if I go back through it and I find one that I hate, I'll, um, I might paint over it. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> so, so this, this one is one of my favorites. I just love this one. Are a lot of these from pictures you've taken yourself? All of them. All of these are from my photos. Uh, this is from a photo that my daughter sent me. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, so sometimes they're from her photos like these are photos she sent me. I, I love to try to just catch these, like, you know, these these expressions. Yeah. That's really fun. And um, and what started happening right around this time is she started looking at the sketchbooks with me. And I realized mm -hmm. that she was really, she was like, oh, go back to the page with Charlie, you know? So I realized with my dog. So she really likes the, um, the ones with Charlie in them. So I decided that I would start adding Charlie um, sometimes when he wasn't even there. Right. Uh, but. Uh, oh, Gail, I think your camera switched to the vertical orientation. Oh, it did. Why did it do that? I didn't touch anything. Hmm, that's odd. Um, also, uh, this is the 15 minute mark. Uh, we have a question about your process do you also do an underpainting um you know what i'm just going to take my phone out and turn it let's just see there we go yeah now we're back yeah uh, i um sorry oopsie sorry <laughs> um i do it i don't do an underpainting I do a, um, uh, I draw it with a watercolor pencil. I see. So, you know, that sometimes I like to, you know, get in, um, you know, a bunch of scenes. This actually looks just like my husband. Like I totally, mm -hmm. and, and how fun, you know, to, to get that. Yeah. That get each other like that. So this is this is where I started like playing like you know my daughter sent me this picture of Mona on the scooter at night I added Charlie on the skateboard uh -huh. you know also because I knew she'd like that um you know I'm always having her pose with Charlie and uh I just have so much fun with these you know it's like playing yeah. with pattern Again, you know, they let me take pictures of them naked, which is awesome. I love and how I, you use the the whites and the bright parts of your page, like with the water and the sun. 
that's really inspiring to see how the how the water is working in this picture, for example. Thank you. Well, water is one of my favorite things to paint. Yeah. And, um, this was a year ago, not this past winter, but the winter before. We love to go to Puerto Rico together. And mm -hmm. this one, I actually painted, uh, Mona Art directed it. I was like, what do you want me to put here? And she says, some chickens. And what mm -hmm. do you want? And she's like, I want to be riding a horse. And so <laughs> the art directed this one. And um, so then these are just a few more from, and, you know, I try to mix it up so that it doesn't, um, it's not all the same. Right. Um, and, you know, just being silly, you know, like she, she had some really special jewels. And so I put them on Charlie. Um, when she got potty trained, we got matching pajamas. You know, it's such a wonderful, this one I remember I painted over it a million times. I hated it. And I finally, I got it to where I liked it, but I, I painted over that one a lot. Um, so this is all last summer. And um, gosh, I haven't looked at these in a long time. This is uh -huh. so fun to actually look through all these books together. Um, I took her to, we met at the National Arts Club and I did a bunch of paintings of her uh, sitting in the National Arts Club. Okay, I think I have time for the last one, which is sketchbook. Okay, I'm gonna go through this one really quickly. So this one is the most recent one, sketchbook number four. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be fun to start it with you know, Sonia pregnant, because we, you know, I knew this was going to be for both. So I thought that was fun. And and then I just, um, here's some more from Sonia at the National, I mean, from Mona at the National Arts Club. And then I painted these two pages while Sonia was in labor. Mm -hmm. And um, I really, I was really thinking about them. I was obviously, I was nervous. And I just painted these and then she was born and we FaceTimed and Mona, you know, she sent some pictures and then I went down there and I took my own pictures, you know, to paint from. Right. And uh, that's what these are. And uh -huh. um, so, you know, I have to admit, Mona's still a little more fun to paint because she's just, <laughs> you know, June is a baby. Um, and uh, what's this is funny because you know both her parents are musicians and they gave her a ukulele and watching her with the ukulele I'm like oh my god she's like a total natural like she oh, just wow. walk around with it um and then these are just some last pages this is in January and there's June uh looking much older than she is and this was a recent um in Puerto Rico and then, you know, sometimes like I was sitting with Mona in a in a in a restaurant and I was like, oh my God, the light right now is incredible. Sit still. I need to take some photos. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why she's looking very serious. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and and now she's she's so good at posing for me. I'm like, go dance out, uh, don't go dance in front of the water, you know, and so she'll do that. <laughs> and um uh, so this is all from from um, very recent, and this is just from a few weeks ago. This one I wrecked. I got I didn't like the face here of my son, so I don't know what I'm doing with that. <laughs> um, this is uh, and then this is the most recent one that I did a couple of weeks ago. Wow! When I was down there for my birthday. Oh, so, this is so good. That's it. So that's the four sketchbooks, and I'll just show you really really quick. This Please. Is a, a small sketchbook that I'm mm -hmm. using right now and this is getting ready for the class that Jennifer and I are teaching I'm it the theme is um, people and flowers I'm sorry people and gardens and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll put a link in there but I we always play with different ideas for what what we were going to want to paint and these are some of the ideas but this is a very this is a small sketchbook not the usual one that I use. The usual one that I use as a small sketchbook with real throwaway paper is a Muji sketchbook. 
I love this sketchbook and I use this a ton when I'm traveling and it takes uh -huh. paint, paint really well. And, um, you know, it just is so not precious. And a lot of times when I, when I'm traveling, I'll start out with stuff like this where I'm just using markers or pens or whatever, just to loosen up and just start seeing what I'm seeing. I mean, what Nishant said about how you see when you're drawing is so important, you know? And it's like, this is, this is um, what uh, people, um, you know, just like drawing with, with um, a brush pen, or um, that's Sam actually, uh, and uh, just doing all kinds of very quick, like this is Mona. I, I, I forgot I was doing some in this other sketchbook, um, but you know, I just play, just play and have fun. And, you know, instead of scrolling on your phone, it's like, you know, you're drawing what you see and, yeah. and, and drawing, um, you know, for fun and observing people. And it's just, it's like, I think the biggest, the most important thing is to not be attached and not care uh, what it looks like. Anyway, that's me. So um, what was the question? Well, I think there was a question about... Um... I think people are very curious about your process. I think everybody's really fascinated by the materials you're using. Could you tell us about the size of your sketchbooks? Uh, sure. So this this little, this Muji, well, here, I'll just put them out here so you can see the difference. Yeah. So the Muji is like this. So this one is, um, I don't know, like five by seven. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember what size this is. I can measure it. But what I do is I'll start out like sometimes when I'm when I'm um, um, finishing a painting and I have mm -hmm. I finished painting for the day and I have paint on my palette, I'll just make a page that I can draw on later. I'm right. not going to do a demo, but I'm just going to show you. I'll take a watercolor pencil or this is a Derwent ink tense pencil. Mm -hmm. I'll do my drawing, you know, right. like, do my drawing like that. And then I, it, the, the watercolor pencil absorbs into it, or yeah. if I'm doing it, you know, like as a, um, a lot of times I, I always draw my thing out first. I'm not a wing it kind of draw whatever. I don't do well with that. So, but it's very loose. Like I draw it very loosely. Um, I think I had one that I started that I didn't, well, not in there. Um, yeah, so those are my, those are, those are my sketchbook. And I also, I use acrylic wash, which is, um, a mixture of acrylic and wash. And, um, I use, um, mostly Turner, mm -hmm. um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's me. So much fun. That was really lovely. Thank you. All right. Uh, let me find my overhead. Um, here I am. Okay. So while you're getting set, I'm just going to answer a couple of these questions. Sure. Um, so colors, you know what? I've got colors. I've got favorite colors, but I just kind of wing it. I don't have specific colors. I just kind of go by what I'm feeling. And acrylic gouache is less plasticky than acrylic. I like the colors better. The colors feel more organic and uh, and um, just not quite as um, shiny as acrylic. And it's different from regular gouache in that it won't lift up. It dries really fast and you can paint mm -hmm. it. So anyway, okay, now Nishant. <laughs> I'm very curious to try gouache now myself. Uh, so I should begin by saying that I am very underconfident with colors and I've made 99% of my drawings with this same fountain pen. This is a Lamy Safari that I fill with platinum carbon ink that I really love. Um, and working with just lines allowed me to sort of think less about colors and just focus on what I could do more confidently. 
Also, it helps to be sneaky if you don't have a lot of materials that you take out in public. So I started drawing Rohan before he was born. I started drawing in the hospital. Uh, this is the fine nib pile. So I started drawing him in the hospital itself when uh, we checked in, the contractions began. I started, uh, I know I had to move away because I couldn't help. <laughs> so I took out my sketchbook and I started just to note down the space that we were in and what we were doing. Um. And hey, Sean. Sure. Sean. Yeah. I think my daughter's here for one minute. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, Sonia, are you here? If you're here, unmute yourself. I just, I, we just thought it would be really fun for her. Oh, I might have lost her. She might not have been. I, I missed her message. Oh, no. Uh, oh, maybe she left. Uh, oh. Okay. Uh, all right. All you right. keep doing yeah, let me go on. So uh, another question about the nib. Um, I do use this fine nib, but then, you know, for my, uh, what I like to do is I, in order to tell things apart and in order to set things in depth, I add a thicker border to things that are in my foreground. And then as things go recede further into the background, I let the lines become thinner. So there's a line width for the foreground, there's a line width for the middle ground. And then I use the reverse side of my fountain pen nib to get the really thin line for the background. And so it gives a bit of depth to my drawings. But I was drawing during labor. <laughs> I was also, uh, you know, uh, I my responsibility at this point was to hold her left foot when she pushed and to cradle her head. And every 15, 20 seconds, she'd be pushing. And then as soon as she was resting, I would sit down and pick up my sketchbook and immediately draw a little bit. And then again, back to pushing. So I would get up, put the sketchbook to the side and hold her leg, hold her head and she'd push. And this is officially the first drawing of Rohan uh, oh within seconds of him being born. As soon as he started crying, this is when the, the pediatrician, I think the pediatrician or maybe the nurse picked him up in order to weigh him. And I knew that I have to do this very quickly. And I really, really want to do this because very soon I'll be too distracted to draw him again. So I'm so happy now that I see it, that I drew him his entire body in one quick line and then filled in some details around it. Uh, this is a drawing more calmly a little later when everybody was sleeping and getting rest, both, uh, both of my two babies. <laughs> so again, thicker lines for the foreground and thinner lines for the background just to push it back a little bit. The reason I draw this way is that I... I'm impatient. I really can't spend more than half an hour on one drawing. So I draw very quickly. I draw with very long, continuous lines that are all curvy and curly and they're never very straight. But I just love to be able to record something while it is happening in front of me. So none of these drawings and none of the drawings I'll show of Rohan are from pictures. They're all drawn right there while I was standing over the crib, while I was sitting on the couch on the side. Uh, Smita was talking to her parents. And Rohan was just starting to stir a little bit and she rested her palm on his body. And I thought this is such a beautiful moment that I want to capture. So these oh are all God. like 10 Sean, minutes. They're, they're so beautiful. I'm just like, oh, they're so gorgeous. Thank you. Uh, Karen is asking about the white highlights. So I carry a couple of Posca markers now because since I started drawing on this brown paper sketchbook. So this is a Stillman and Burns sketchbook. Uh, Stillman and Burn has these uh, sketchbooks with gray and brown paper. And I really love this brown paper because the brown paper has sort of helped me use color. It helps me see the brown page as the first color on the page, my black ink as the second color. So I, you know, feel a little relaxed about using a third color, which is this Posca marker that I used for the white highlights. Um, so the next day, the checkups, then my parents are here take, helping us take care of him. So they came to see Rohan. So this is the first time that they held Rohan and uh, I was sitting beside them and we were waiting for checkout. So I quickly made a drawing of them. This is Rohan's first oil massage. He gets a massage every single day. Lucky Rohan. And his grandmother is more than happy to be the one to do it. So he started to enjoy them more now. But the first time, this is on the 10th of February. So he's five days old. So the first time this happened, he was a little taken aback. I think all his experiences are first time experiences. So he had no clue about how to feel about it. But now he really enjoys them. He's getting a little too spoiled with them. And once they leave, I'm not sure if he's going to be getting such 
pampering at all times of the day. I wonder what that will do. Uh, this is the first picnic Rohan went to. We went to the park near our home and we walked about with him. And while everybody was enjoying walking him around and introducing him to grass, I made these very quick drawings. Uh, again, uh, there's a question. So this is a, a Stillman and Byrne Nova series sketchbook with brown paper. It's good for colors, but I don't use watercolors, so I can't speak to how it holds water. I use the Posca marker on it. Uh, this one has some wipes, which is made with a jelly roll pen, but mainly I use it for Posca markers. This is also the, the same picnic when we introduced Rohan to grass. I really wanted to introduce him to grass and it was fun. He His eyes went really wide when he touched the texture for the first time and then he started crying. So he put him on a mat. <laughs> And just recently, I came back to this sketchbook when I went out to draw with Posca markers. So this is a non-Rohan drawing, but very typical of how I do things. Uh, I draw straight with ink. I don't do any pencils. I don't do any underlining. So in this case, I wanted to draw the foreground with ink. And then I wanted to have colors to show how the lights fall on the buildings and the, the play of the clouds in the sky. So... To do the colors, what I did was I did I did a very faint pencil lining to mark out the buildings and then throw down the colors on top of it. So it made for an interesting thing because now I have a very strong foreground with my ink lines, which I like very much. And then things go further away and the lines become fainter, which again adds to that sense of depth. This is my first time using water on my Posca markers. So they are famously water soluble. And I wanted to see if I could carry a couple of markers and if I could have water and if I could do things with it because I'm very impatient with watercolors, with the traditional media. I don't have the, the patience to let them dry and then add another layer and uh, I can't wait around for that. So I end up spoiling the effect. So I have to look for these kind of hacks and solutions and Posca markers are kind of doing it for me right now. But so uh, what happened was I drew him in this sketchbook for a little bit. And then I decided, because this is my regular sketchbook that I take out to draw with me, I decided I really wanted to have a dedicated sketchbook for him. So I got this little sketchbook from Opus Art Supplies. It's just their in-house brand. And it's really only good for dry media. So I started drawing him every day in this. Every day, a little drawing, every day just a sense of what we're doing at home with him and how it's going. So this is my father feeding him, uh, playing some music to lull him into calmness while we do that. And drawing him every day is also sort of let me push out a little bit with colors. And this is my, my technique is that I went and bought myself just these five colors, six colors. Uh, there's another one on the side. So I have these six colors that I'm letting myself play with. I don't want too many colors because then I'll be very bad at, uh, you know, I have decision paralysis. I just won't know what to use. So I give myself just three colors at a time and let's try to work within them. Let's not use colors for realism, but only for uh, only for effect. Uh, Rohan is actually going to make a guest appearance. So let me quickly switch. Uh, Rohan is right here and I'd really love to show him on the screen. Here he is. Hello, Rohan. Talk to 100 people. Say hello to everyone. <laughs> so he's been the subject of all of my art for the last two months, two and a half months. Oh, so cute. He doesn't yet respond to kisses. I'm waiting for when he starts to appreciate how good he has it in life. But that's, <laughs> that time has not arrived yet. <laughs> let's, let's go back to his sketches. So this is Rohan again. Um, what I'm trying Nishan, to do now, yes. Nishan, are those are those just regular color pencils or watercolor pencils? They are watercolor pencils. So oh, these good. are okay. Karen Dash's uh, okay. Museum Aquarelle, and this sign allegedly means that they are water soluble. Okay. So I've been using these. Uh, first, I really didn't think I could add color uh, water. I wasn't really confident. I just wanted to use colors and to use colors in a way that would help me appreciate light and shadow to show texture without necessarily using colors representationally. Like this rocker is not actually red and yellow, but I wanted to use a bright color for bright things and a darker color for dark things and see how colors relate to each other. This is 
part of my way of self educating myself with color and get comfortable so as you see in page after page i start becoming a little more confident with how to use colors for different things they are all largely used in uh, sets of three colors at a time so green purple orange uh, yellow red purple and then finally a little bit of green because i felt it wasn't dark enough but uh, groups of two or three colors at a time and trying to see what they can say how they can work around each other and how they can sort of uh, fill in for things like light and shadow so i'm really enjoying this and it's helping me connect one color to another it's helping me think beyond my you know think beyond just lines and see more textures and shapes no erasers in these drawings either because i'm too impatient for that everything is quick everything is like 5 minutes at most so 5 or 10 minutes per drawing and really just going with the lines so a lot of these lines are continuous lines so this is right from this is my mother so i tend to start at the ear and then i go up and then i go around so this was probably one continuous line all the way till here before i went and made a second line on the page i make a lot of long continuous lines because it helps me to capture form in dynamic settings pose and uh, interaction before somebody changes positions it helps me set down shapes so it really affects my composition that i can make one long confident line before i get into the details of it this was his first uh, vaccine shot so we had to distract him with a rattle because he cried just for a moment uh then i realized that these are water soluble colors and maybe i can add some water so two colors just two colors and i tried to add a bit of water to see what it how it would play out i had no idea what it would look like i'm very pleased with this and i tried to replicate it again kind of overdid it went back to dry this is just two colors the red and the yellow and i'm enjoying how uh you know how i can depict light how i this was drawn in near complete darkness so just the one pen while he was sleeping um i just want to interrupt you with a question sure. because this is a, a good relevant question for yeah. everybody always wonders how was that moment when you actually felt okay this is my style and i want to stick with it and uh -huh. second question was there also a self discovery phase behind the scene oh, you, not, uh, you know that's a really important question you know uh, so what i like to say is about style in all my workshops i talk about it uh, there's a quote from my favorite musician my favorite musician of all time is miles davis and he has a quote uh, he says once is a mistake twice is an idea three times is style style is the the unquote uh, style therefore is the accumulation of all the things we think of as our mistakes as our idiosyncrasies as our faults as our you know misgivings our inabilities weaknesses if you stay with those weaknesses in my case my impatience to erase lines so drawing with a pen my inability to draw certain things i don't draw feet very often cuz i'm just bad at drawing feet uh, so i kind of hide them or i don't draw them at all so instead of trying to correct my mistakes i just stayed with it because i'm impatient i pushed myself to finish quickly so i started drawing really long lines in order to finish quickly because i'm curious about uh, dynamic movement what people do in public spaces i had to draw quickly while drawing people in action so all of these conditions that i put myself under is the conditions are the conditions that led to my style so the mistakes that i you know mistakes like imperfections and inability to draw something therefore not drawing a lot of facial details these mistakes if you stick with them they become ideas and the longer you stay with your ideas they develop into style so my advice to people is that don't try to be perfect don't try to erase your mistakes live with them try to see that this is going to be the path to telling you who you are telling you what you are like and those are the things that will naturally lead to your style once you reach that point you know i don't have to think about drawing in my style this is just who i am when i draw this is how i draw because this is most naturally and authentically me 
I spent years believing that it was too late for me to discover a style. I was 29 years old when I first went out to draw with a sketchbook and fountain pen. And I thought, surely now it's too late. The best I can do is maybe draw respectably well, but how can I possibly have style now? But I can tell you that's not the case. You can develop style as long as you forgive yourself and you don't think of your mistakes as things that need to be hidden from the world. Stay with them and something comes out. So no erasers because that's just how I am. I will make a bad line and I will just live with it. So everything stays where it is. And therefore, I take certain turns. Therefore, I make certain decisions. And those decisions become what is my style of drawing. Uh, uh, I, I just want to say I don't use erasers either. I'm not a believer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Erasers are overrated. Straight lines are overrated. We don't need any of those things. Someone asked about the fountain pen. It's a Lamy Safari. So Lamy is an excellent starter fountain pen. It's about uh, 38 to 40 US dollars. And this specific pen has been in my life for seven years. Literally every single day I use it. I fly with it everywhere. It is super sturdy. It's an excellent investment. Uh, Rohan at tummy time. So this is a, mo a moment where he was moving quite a bit. I tend to not draw hands. So I approximate them like this, very quick lines, just to sort of make it fit in. Uh, another interesting question from Ellen. What type of commissions do you get? Which ones do you enjoy the most? So I should say, uh, with all respect, that I am so bad at doing things that other people tell me to do. People commission me for art, and I feel apologetic because I really don't like being told what to draw, even if it comes with a lot of money. <laughs> so the best commissions for me are now the ones that I'm getting now, which I'm really enjoying, are the ones where people tell me, you know, Nishant, we want you to draw our storefront, or we want you to draw our family but no, no notes, just do what you want, do it how you like. And I find that when I have that kind of freedom, I tend to do, put in the most effort and to do my best work. So I love commissions that let me draw on location. If not that, I love locations that, uh, commissions that are open-ended and they just tell me to do what I want. And I end up going above and beyond for them. But commissions that come with very strict guidelines you know, I feel like it's, I'm not the best guy for that. And I tend to tell them to find someone else. I'm happy to refer someone else for that kind of job. I've turned down a lot of illustrator jobs, which come with very specific style guidelines, because I'm so bad at, I'm so bad at doing what I'm told. <laughs> I have to work around it. It's another mistake that I'm learning to live with and not squash. So three color drawing, uh, yellow, uh, orange, and purple. Early in the morning, Rohan decided he was going to not be cooperative, cr cried really, really loudly until he was finally satisfied and he started taking it more, uh, more peaceably, needed a few burps, needed a bit of cajoling, and then he decided to cooperate. He's very cooperative. He just needs, he just doesn't like being taken for granted. So he lets it know, lets you know that he's capable of noise if he so wishes. But most of the time, he's really nice. And he just loves looking at my art on the walls. So we've realized his favorite wall in the entire house is where I have my pen and ink drawings. Maybe it's because they're monochrome. Maybe it's because it's just simple lines and not, uh, you know, he can't see too much color at an early age. But he's just mesmerized by it. I wonder if it's the art or if it's just the frames. Maybe he's just looking at the frames. Like the simple rectangle shapes and I'll realize later it wasn't the art at all but he stares at it he turns his head around if you turn him away from it and he keeps looking at it so I'm going to go ahead and assume that he just loves to look at my art and not just the frames uh, but I've been pushing I've been pushing with these colors I've been making them more solid so if you compare it to here where I was kind of nervous about them to here where I'm a little more confident and I'm happy to use deeply colored solid areas in my work. So every day that I'm doing this, and because it's a similar subject, a lot of similar space uh, activities, my area of play becomes what more can I do that I didn't do before? So what other style of coloring can I add? Can I be more effective with the notes, with the writing around it? Can I be a little more expressive with just the monochrome? I I have to play and I always think about how can I make it fun 
because I feel like great discoveries only come when we allow ourselves to have fun. And it's the only way that I've found to keep at it every day. The way that I started drawing, the way that I made it into a habit was because I tied fun with curiosity, with a thing that I needed to do. As long as it was work and it was not fun, it had ne it could never become a habit. And this is what my advice is to everyone as well, that if you can find a way that it is always fun for you, drawing and art can be always fun, regardless of skill level. And if we can find what that is, whether it's gouache, whether it's watercolors or color pencils or ink, whether it's drawing from reference, whether it's drawing from observation, let's explore and find the thing that makes it joy for us. And then it can become a thing that always brings us joy. And this whole journey of quote unquote, getting better, making a regular practice of it, this whole journey becomes joyous, which is really the only point. The only point is to spend our time doing something that we love. Uh, Jack asks, are you deliberately using a shadow effect or highlighting? Jack, I really think about shadows. I really think about uh, hi where highlights fall because I've drawn so much with just an ink pen and one ink on white paper doesn't let you really emphasize light as much as it lets you emphasize shadow. So now that I'm using different colors, I do very seriously think about light, where it falls and how things stand in contrast. So how does light feel? How does shadow feel? And how does that tell us about texture? And how does that tell us about depth? These are things I'm discovering. These are answers I'm able to come up with because I'm expanding my toolkit. I could not have shown you all of these details if I was just working with this fountain pen nib. Um, I could not be, I could not have faint lines. I could not have a uh, texture the way I can now with color pencils, with different colors, with different nib sizes, quite blunt. They're not very sharp. So that means I just sort of work around them and do what I can with them. I'm not very diligent with sharpening them. Another laziness of mine. This is the drawing I think that I'm most proud of in this sketchbook. I used this a uh, pencil. I can't find it right now, but it's around here somewhere. I used a 10B pencil that Samantha gifted me when I met her most recently in New York. And I'm, I've really enjoyed using it. I love that I can make a, a sort of a thinking line, just a line that's going and I'm, it's, I'm not fully committed to it, but it's there and it's very faint. You can't do that with ink. With ink, every line is so deliberate. But uh, so something like like this, every line is so deliberate, so specifically there. And here I'm sort of actively thinking while I'm making the line about what I want it to be and whether it really, really matters. And that's a different approach to art. And I'm enjoying both of these. Nishant, um, yeah. it's, um, we're over our time, which I'm fine with. I don't know if we want to go too much longer, but no. Um, someone, uh, was writing about he doesn't understand how we can not use a eraser i just want to say that that i will make lines all the time that i end up painting over mm -hmm. so i use my paint as my eraser so you know like if i've made if i've made if i've painted the head and uh and the body and then i do my background first and i'm like oh the head is too big i just paint use my paint as my eraser so, um, you know, I'm fixing things all the time. It's different when you're using an ink pen that you can't, yeah, you can't fix that. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. anyway, I, it's it's a great question. I I just want to very quickly go into it. So Nancy asks, uh, no, not Nancy. I think it's Jen. Uh, wind up with all sorts of crossing lines if there is no pre-drawing or erasing. So this is a really central part of my workshops. Also, that I like to tell people how to draw on a page when you can't erase something. And the general idea, you can, uh, I'll be putting the link to my workshop and you will be able to learn more there. But the general idea is when you draw with ink and you can't erase, the most basic thing you have to remember is you draw the thing that helps you draw the next thing. So my way of framing my page is I begin at one thing, which gives me information about the next thing I need to draw, how big it needs to be, where it needs to go, how far away it is. And that helps me jump on to the next thing. So I'm sort of planning my composition of the page and my approach to the page very instinctively now that I have a lot of practice. But the more you do it, the more you learn, 
the learning to draw with ink, the main lesson for me was that bad drawings are good for you. Please, if you feel like you're going to make a bad drawing, go ahead and make it. Make lots and lots of bad drawings. Learn to love them. Out of that, you will find your style. Out of that, you will find the joy. Making good drawings is, you know, it becomes easier over time, but that's, it's, it's so irrelevant. Please learn to love your bad drawings and learn to find that the joy is not in how good the drawing is. It's just in this business of looking at a thing and then thinking about how that might go on your page and then doing this business of translation from sight to hand to page using whatever tool you have, whatever tool you enjoy. Yes, I, I agree with everything you're saying. And also when I'm out and about, I don't usually have paint. I have pencils, pens, like I like to be able to be sneaky like you. I don't like people to be like see me have like a big setup or anything like that. Cause a lot of times I don't I don't want people to know I'm drawing them, you mm -hmm. know. So, so I think it'll be so much fun if I come to the East Coast for us to draw together, Gail. I think I would love yeah. to see how yeah. you do things and we can be sneaky together at a cafe. It's going to be a lot of fun to do. That would be very fun. Should we just take a few last questions and then yeah. we probably should end? Yeah. Uh, if if you want to unmute to ask a question. Oh, did you take off the mute? You muted um, everyone. Allow participants to unmute, yes. So yeah. now you can unmute yourself. If you have any question, feel free to ask. We'll just, we'll just take a couple because we've gone over. We don't want this to be too long. Uh, Thanks, Liz. Uh, will we have access? You don't have access to the chat, but you'll you'll all get the video. And when we send you the um, the video link, we'll also give you the links to our workshops and and you know other stuff that we're doing. So um, you'll get all that. Um, yeah. Thanks for permission to make errors. Making mistakes is is like huge and unlike i mean i i think it's great that you know what you don't want to do nishan and you don't mm -hmm. want to you know like do what people tell you to do <laughs> i have been doing that kind of assignment work you know my whole career and right. i sometimes what will happen is i'll do what the person wants or the client wants and then i'll do what i want and sometimes and then i'll show, sometimes show both so I'm like, okay, I've given you what you've asked for. And here's what I think is actually a better idea. And um, luckily that doesn't happen too often. Like usually when I get hired, it's because of what I do. Actually, that's mostly the case now. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, um, you know, there, it, I would actually suggest to you that you, you could try that. You could say, okay, I'll do what you want, but I'm also going to show you what I think would look best. I, I think, I think that is useful advice. I really, I really need it. I'm so grateful to people who come to me for commissions and then I hate myself for how I feel about it. So I need to find that happy ground and I need to be less, uh, you know, more accommodating to it. I have found that my first reaction is one of rebellion. My second reaction is actually understanding, you know, maybe they have a good point. Maybe I should change it. So it takes me a few minutes to accept that maybe they have a good point. And my first reaction is always, nope, I don't want to do it. Whatever you said, no matter what it is, I don't want to do it. So I'm starting to get out of that zone. At the same time, I've also would like to say that, you know, nobody, uh, like, so art is this thing, right? Like there is no one definition of good art or perfect art or best art. Art is a way that we see the world. And so if you're an artist and you're just starting out, if you're doing your first commissions, uh, even then, when the reason somebody wants you to do something is because they want to see something through you. And it is our job to be confident about it and to be bold about it and to be able to say, this is what I want to show you. I think you will like it. And to show that with all the confidence it needs. And it, you know, it's difficult because there's just so much competition and now there are computers competing with us and things like that and all kinds of ugly things happening in the world. But it's really important for us to be bold, even in such times. Well, I would say it's safe to say that nobody can do exactly what you or I are doing. Like our hand is very, um, 
you know, it's very uh, organic. And I, that's very hard to duplicate. And I just want to say a little bit more about process because I had an experience this past week. I have a, a, a illustration coming out in the New York Times, I think, I think maybe this week. And oh my God, I put my I went through the ringer on this on this job <laughs> where I I I I painted a bunch of different ideas and they didn't and, and they weren't working. And I was like, do I even know how to paint? Have I completely forgotten how to paint? Like, like, like very veteran artists go through this. Mm -hmm. Like I talked to my friends who've been painting for 40, 50 years, super pro, very high level. They go through this too. Yeah. And the part of the problem is, is that you have to go through this process. And sometimes it's like a day or two of ugly paintings. And then on the third day, oh, now I got it. But, <laughs> you know, some people just get derailed by that. And yeah. And they, freaked out and I was getting a little freaked out but I pushed through it and you know yeah I did it. but it's not actually it's not fun that is not fun mm -hmm. that is hard. that's hard work it and is so, I think it's so you know when we have of, yeah go on sorry the beauty of what we're doing we're showing you guys is that this is pure fun it oh it so much is yes only should be fun yeah anyway. I feel like, you know, the more we learn new things, we start to understand the journey of learning. Like it starts with things being hard and then you reach a point where it's kind of acquires a skill. You kind of upgrade your skill level and it becomes fun. And then you hit a plateau again and then it's hard again. This journey of sort of finding your way around learning a new thing or building up your skills is something you get a little more used to. It's like running almost. It's always miserable. That first mile is always miserable, right. but you know what it feels like to reach the end. And once you have more ideas and more experiences of reaching the end of a run, you can sort of use that to tell yourself during that first mile that it's going to get better. You know how it feels. Just remember, hold on to that thing that comes at the end and you know that dopamine rush is coming. And it's sort of like that with an art practice too. Gail, why don't we, before we close, why don't you tell me a little bit about the workshop that you're offering, what it's going to give people, who it's kind of like, what kind of participants do you think would be most interested in it? Oh, great. Yeah. So my, my teaching partner, uh, Jennifer, uh, August Wren, um, and I uh, have been teaching these Zoom workshops and uh, other uh, sketchbook workshops. Um, and it's really, uh, the, the theme is people in gardens. And we both paint very um, loose and interpretively. And we basically each paint, it's open to all levels, like people bring their kids and uh, we each paint for like 40 minutes. And then we do a show and tell at the end where everybody who wants to show their work shows their work. They're really fun and they're donation based. So we wanna make them open to anybody who wants to take them. And we really have a lot of fun. And I, I don't know why, but it's mostly all women <laughs> have some kids. Um, we might have one random guy or two. But anyway, they're very fun. And this next one is on May 11th. And um, uh, I encourage you to check it out uh, mm -hmm. if, uh, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. And Nishant, you have a workshop coming up too. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, my workshops are around this common thing that I hear from people who like my work, which is how do I draw in sp in public spaces? How do I build up the courage to reduce how, you know, how complex and overwhelming urban scenery can look? How many things are going on? How do we sit down? Where do we begin? How do we know how to start and how to end within a reasonable time? Because I'm not taking pictures. I'm drawing right there. Sometimes I'm drawing on vacation. So I have others around me who are not artists. And I have to accommodate for their time as well. I can't just sit here for two hours. So my workshop is about how to simplify what we see and how to think in layers and how to use that to not only separate what's near and what's far, but also to separate what's important and what is less important. Therefore, how to have focus as an artist and how to prioritize for time. So uh, I, my workshop is really about how to how to put something on paper that is simpler than what you see in order to show people what it is that caught your eye and not necessarily feel like you need to do the job of a photograph, which is to show everything. Yeah, um, we that's exactly how we teach also. 
we, even from life or from photos, we simplify. And my goal is never to replicate what I'm seeing. It's always to catch the feeling of what's important to me that I'm seeing. Yeah. Or changing it. If I don't like, if I don't like some aspect of what I'm seeing, I just change it. You know, yeah. it's like we're making the rules. Absolutely. I know we, uh, we should, we should um, probably, um, we should end. It's, it's, <laughs> It's been like, I know we could talk forever, but we don't want this video to be too long that people get bored. Um, so we will share this video soon on YouTube and everybody should get an email about it who's joined us. And um, thank you so much for joining us, guys. Like, this is so great. It's honestly, it's excellent. Every time people join me for these things, I'm always blown away by how much people, how much people care, how nice they are about listening to us. Well, thank you for saying yes to doing this with <laughs> me. That has been so fun. Very inspired. Yeah. I'm inspired. <laughs> thank so, you, Gail. Like, I'm going to break out some more colors now. I'm sure I'm going to get a bigger sketchbook and I'm going to become even more bold with, with colors after seeing your sketches. It's so, so oh, gorgeous. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, I guess you're the one who has to end this because... Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, thank you for joining us, guys. I'm going to close this call now. Uh, please let us know. Uh, you're going to all be in our newsletter list. So please let us know. Get back to us about more questions, about how it felt to see this, about how maybe you, if you decide to start drawing your loved ones, tell us about it and share your drawings. I'd love to see them. Thank you for attending, yeah. guys. Have a great day. And okay. yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.